Good morning all, it's post bag and I need to do a post bag because I need various shizzle for my projects. Right, let's get straight in and start with this one. What is it? I don't think I cut through the center bag. That's annoying. It's connectors, it's sockets. Yes, these are 2.1 millimeter. Well, I assume they're 2.1. Oh, they're all over the floor. Um, this is a basic socket. It's only got two connections. Um, if it's 2.1, both ends of this cable. Ooh, it's a bit tight, actually. Yeah, that's very tight. But both ends of this cable should fit in there. Actually, what seems to be tight is the, the barrel outer. But I don't know. Tight's good, isn't it? Now this is not the uh, all singing, all dancing uh, socket here with three connections and the changeover switch. And I did do a diagram of the changeover switch when I was doing um, this thing to put onto Ryobi batteries to power my soldering iron. No, it's not that. As I say, this is just a very basic two pin with two connections, no switching mechanism at all. Um, yeah, but these are disturbingly tight actually. Let's try it on this one. This is my uh, solar feed Yeah, that is quite tight. Let's just see whether it's making a connection with this bulb Yeah, so that's lighting up there. So that does make a connection. Um, maybe they'll work themselves loose uh, over time. Who knows? Now is there a connection between um, the ground connection which is this longer one and this metal front Yes, there is. That's fine. And so these items are 10 pieces, 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter, 12 volt, or actually a range of voltages, DC power supply jack socket female panel mount connector. Uh, just 99 cents for 10. I think I bought 20. Free shipping, and these came from Windows 7777. Right, next up is this one. I'm going to cut quite near the edge because I think there might be wires in here. Let's get out. Oh, they're probably uh, in their sealed internal bags. If I can get that out. Um, a couple of battery boxes. Let's open it up. Yes, it's a couple of these. Uh, six double A's fit into here. 1.5 volt. Is UM3 a double A? I think it is. Uh, actually, I think in my drawer here, I've got some double A's yes I have conveniently six I don't know whether the other the other two went not entirely sure whether these are charged or not but let's put them in uh, yeah that's nice and easy the springs are fairly accommodating let's shove six of these oh that's an inner loop light look which has um, a lower capacity uh, oh, better make sure that's not shorting. Uh, and let's just check that on that bulb again to make sure we've got power. Yes, we've got a connection through to there. Yeah, so these are battery boxes laid out in this sort of six cells in a long line configuration with a sort of snap lid, which goes on like that. So the idea of these um, is to provide power for this watt meter here on my Muppet 2 board um, takes a fair bit of juice this and I think it's because well it's got an OLED uh, it's also got a, a Arduino Nano no it's a Pro Mini this one uh, running at 16 megahertz so it does it is fairly juicy it does consume a fair bit of juice and I was just finding that um, 9 volt nickel metal hydride rechargeables just weren't lasting long enough for one you know full session playing with this I don't know large part of a day perhaps and that I'd go for uh, a little bit more capacity in the form of six AAs to power this thing. So it's just a case of uh, joining these wires to these wires. I don't think I'm going to be able to take these off. No, they're actually attached. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that. Let's get a torch. They're attached to sort of crimped metal um, Mm, what would you call them which are mounted or, or riveted up inside these two connections so 
No, that's not going to uh, replace easily. I'm just going to have to make a wire join, put a bit of heat shrink on. Um, so let's just move these to one side for a moment because I have another one here um, which might work as an alternative. So let's open, ooh, let's open this one up. Uh, yes, that's very tightly packaged. Um, and that's these six way again, uh, double A's and um, they will have a PP3 type clip, a nine volt type clip. It's for the same thing, just to keep those, I suppose they're a little bit more compact, aren't they? Uh, and possibly the nine volt clip might be a better alternative in case I wanted to do a short session on one of those. Yeah, maybe I'll use one of these, but then I could make some of these up with that um, two pin JST and just have all different options. Uh, so these are another alternative. So uh, the first of those battery boxes is this, it's two pieces, oh two pieces, um, I didn't buy two, I just bought one of the two pieces, yeah anyway you know what I mean, black plastic battery holder case wired with cover for six AAs, nine volts, nine volts that is if you put uh, alkalines in there, uh, what is it with um, nickel metal hydrides, I think it's 7.2, so $3.57 for those two, uh, free shipping and these came from CP3 Go. And uh, the other style of battery holder is this, two pieces again, six times AA, two side battery holder case, nine volts, case holder, whatever. Uh, it says not include battery snap. No, it doesn't include the battery snap, just the case. Um, $1.69 for two, that's quite cheap, isn't it? Free shipping, and this came from Mazian. Right, another one, and it is this. Battery snap. Uh, that looks like a lot of pieces, but these are bundled in sets of 10, and there are five sets of 10. Yeah, so it's 50 pieces of these PP3 uh, battery snaps or clips or whatever, uh, which will fit onto, um, well, my 9 volt battery, all those battery cases that I just got. Not much really to say about these. Let's go to the listing. So these are 50 pieces snap-on 9 volt battery holder clip, connect a hard shell. It's not really a hard shell, in fact it's a soft shell. Uh, it's fairly soft and squidgy. 10 centimeters is the cable length, 100 millimeters. Uh, 50 pieces for $3.39 free shipping and these came from, oh they came from Alice. And next we have this one. What's in here? That nice, that nice, very blunt isn't it? what's in here. It is potentiometers. Uh, yeah, 10k popped, I think it's a sort of general value. I don't want to be too brutal with these because they, they, they're a bit fragile. Um, yeah, they've changed the style of that. Uh, let me just open this other one because uh, they didn't used to be, well, they didn't used to have these two connectors. Oh, is that a Grove Grove connector or something? Vaguely rings a bell. Um, what these are for, if I can bring this over without destroying it, is the pots for my Arduino. So uh, I got a feeling that these are still ground VCC and signal in that order. And that's, um, Kind of what I need because these Arduino breakout boards are the same, ground on the end there, VCC in the middle and signal up there. So you can run a, a straight run of wires out to these pot boards. So the old pot board had a um, central mounting hole, couple of holes there, 10k pot, uh, but only the one connector, the DuPont connector. These have obviously got the DuPont and also I think this is Grove. Is that something to do with Seed Studios? I think maybe they came up with that concept. Um, so what I want these for is because I do have two of these pots, but this one you can see I've marked an X on it um, because it's got very twitchy. I think the wiper is not making a very good contact with the track and therefore um, it's a bit twitchy. You only have to knock it and it kind of disconnects. This one still seems to be okay. But I thought I'd get two brand new ones 
to continue on with uh, my Arduino related Muppet 2 type buck boost converter type of projects. Uh, yes, yeah, so this item is indeed a 10k ohm. It'll be linear, of course. Rotary potentiometer module for Arduino Uno, PIC, I suppose, yes, uh, AVR and other uh, microcontrollers. 99 cents each. I bought two. Um, free shipping. These came from Love Cell 2013. Let's just have a look at this uh, image. You can see that the Grove connector, the connector uh, bottom right, we've got a three pin GVS, so that's ground VCC and signal, and a four pin GVNS, ground VCC, uh, not connected, I presume, and signal. And uh, yes, if I illuminate that from the bottom, I think you can see ground is linked to ground. VCC goes somewhere to the pot, so does signal, but N doesn't appear to go anywhere. Let's just take a look at the Grove system um, on Seed's website. And uh, I think you can probably see from this that um, the three pin DuPont is 2.54 millimeter spacing, so tenth of an inch. These are slightly closer together, so I'm pretty certain that this four pin connector uses two millimeter uh, pitch between the pins. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the Grove system on Seed with three E's studio.com. And uh, we've got all sorts of uh, stuff there. Size of Grove, how to connect your board. But we've got the connector types. They're all these four pin. Uh, digital, we've got, uh, well, it, it's ground at the end, then VCC. Let's bring that up a bit. Ground VCC, DN plus one and DN. Analog is ground VCC. Well, they call it uh, AN plus one. It's marked as N or not connected on the pot board and the primary analog. So you've got a primary analog and possible use of, of a secondary analog. There's also then uh, the UART connector. Again, four pin ground on the end, VCC, TX, RX. And I squared C, ground VCC, SDA and SCL. And then you've got these Grove compatible cables. Yeah, so fairly certain that um, that is indeed a Grove connector. Uh, I'm not using it, so I don't know why I'm getting so excited about it, but uh, these appear to be Grove compatible and standard uh, three pin DuPont. Right, let's do one more. I think that takes the total to six for today. And it's a jolly large set of, um, what are these, crimp style terminal ring and spade uh, terminal connectors. Well now there are lots of different types here. Um, three sections of ring terminals and three sections of spade terminals. Uh, all different sizes. Looks like nine different types. Let's look at the, well uh, this is a fork terminal really isn't it? Um, I wanted something to replace or to uh, bump up my stocks of these which I bought um, some time ago from Rapid Electronics but the quality does seem very different between what I've just bought and the ones I bought from uh, the UK supplier. Let's try and take a closer look at that. Uh, so these are the ones I bought some time ago and you can see that um, I'm very much running out of these. Now these are marked 1.255 and I believe that the five is the, um, the distance between the two uh, fork pieces. So I think that's five millimeters, but let's get well, I've only got three left. Let's get those out. So the original ones I bought, um, this one says KS 1.25-5. I think five, as I say, is the gap across there. 1.25, I think, must be the diameter of the hole in the end. This is a 1.5, so it's larger. Um, let's have a look at that. And, uh, yeah, you can see that the, uh, the older one on the left has that smaller 1.25 diameter I think yeah it's probably 1.25 millimeters and the newer one 1.5 but the quality is just worlds apart the older one's much thicker metal the new one is just very nasty uh, pressed metal and in fact you can see from this one here um, that they've had some manufacturing problems the edges are all just very rough and that one's obviously got crushed in the machine somewhere yeah they're just cheap and nasty aren't they 
Uh, one thing they did have in that set is a 1.5-4, so I assume that's four millimeters across the uh, sort of uh, tongue bits, whatever they're called. So let's just see whether that fits around a four millimeter banana um, connector. Well, no, it doesn't. That doesn't fit in there. So obviously the four millimeters, if indeed it is four millimeters, is not very precise. All my terminal posts are greater than four millimeters. So that's a waste of time. I was rather hoping the four millimeter would be a perfect fit. Uh, the five millimeter, where's my old and nice ones, are just a little bit loose, as you can see. Uh, but there are plenty of them, so they'll do as a stopgap um, while I place an order with Rapid. I need to place an order with Rapid anyway, because I'm running out of this wire, um, which is just good general purpose. I think it's 14 amp continuous. It's quite heavy duty uh, wire, which I bought originally for the charge controllers, but which is just generally useful. Uh, I've completely run out of, which one is it? Yeah, red I've run out of. I've got a bit of yellow and a bit of black left. Uh, but anyway, these will do. The minimum uh, hole diameter on the end in this set is 1.5. And I did quite like the 1.25, this very narrow hole. It is a better fit for this wire when it's stripped and tinned. It fits in there really quite nice. I'm going to place an order with Rapid Electronics. So this item is um, a 420 piece, 18 values. Uh, yes, there are 18 little compartments non-insulated, which means they don't have the blue, red, and yellow plastic insulating sleeves on uh, that some of them have. Ring, fork, U-type, female terminals, assortment kit, $9.56. Is that good value? Not given the quality of them, I'm not sure it is particularly. Um, anyway, free shipping, and these came from Moon River, 1980. And so these are today's post bag items. Now a big thanks uh, once again to Patreon supporters who are in effect um, sponsors of these post bag videos because it's uh, Patreon funds which I use to purchase this stuff. Um, so if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter then click this link here. Um, another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff and if you're not subscribed to my channel and you like to be then click this link here and you can subscribe. Cheerio.